Man, primers. There is so many primers. Why do we have so many? So confusing, nicknames, tech names, all sorts of stuff. What is the ultimate restoration process? We're not concerned about smash repair or the collision repair. We want the ultimate restoration process in coatings for primers. So let's learn something about all these different things. How do we get the best out of them? What are the benefits? So we've got a few here, we're gonna go through them. And at the end of this, we're gonna go bang. This is why we go boom, boom, boom and get that coatings down for our restoration job. So we've got acid etch, etch, sealer, EP, epoxy, poly, DTMs, polyesters, 2K, high build, high fill, urethane, wow, wet on wets. Like, what does all this mean? How do we use them? You know, do we need it all or not? So let's just get into some of those. We're talking about restoration specifically. We're talking about exterior of car specifically. So let's just hone in on what we need for that job. Get rid of the ones we don't need you know, and just get this process or this layer of coatings just dialed in. What do they all do? All right, now, do yourself a favor. Every single product and every single primer manufacturer will do a TDS, a technical data sheet. Looks something like this, right? One of these, or, you know, sometimes they look like this. Sometimes they will come like this in a big book, right? But every single one of these will have a technical data sheet. Now that data sheet, it'll tell you the very specifics of that product. It'll tell you the mix ratio, the reducer, what spray gun size to use, how many coats to use, what time between coats, right? The manufacturer has spent a tremendous amount of time putting all that information together. So whatever product you decide to use, read the data sheet. Some are DTM, some are DTM. DTM, direct to metal, okay? Not all products are direct to metal. Some products are, some products are not. So when you hear someone say DTM, that just means direct to metal. Make sure you choose the appropriate product for the application. So, wow, wet on wet, what is that? So it's quite simply, wet on wet is put a coat down, wait for it to flash off, you know, your five, 10, 15 minutes, and then your next coating, come and spray it straight on top. So you're spraying a wet coating on top of a wet coating. So wow, that's where that abbreviation comes from. And the rest of the jobs like this, we've got rusty steel, clean steel, then we start working up from there. So what do we wanna do? Right, let's kick off with etch primers, or you know, could, and sometimes they're nicknamed acid etch. Now, in a resto job, they're probably not gonna be that important. They're gonna be more of a scenario where something gets blasted and you wanna get something on it quick. Etches and acid etches are designed for wet on wet. They are not a sealer. They are not a high build. They're not a waterproof coating. So etch primers, you know, good inclusion pair for rub-throughs. Um, for the purpose of today, today's conversation around restoration, not really necessary. So we can skip straight over those. So restoration process, rusty steel, clean steel, sealer, EP, epoxy. So sealer, EP, epoxy, they're all the same thing. Epoxy, EP, EP short for epoxy. Sealer, well epoxy is the best sealer. So three different names for one product. Epoxy is gonna be your absolute best sealer of bare metal. It's a waterproof barrier, chemical resistant barrier. It dries hard, we can work on top of it. So it buys us the time to have our project sitting around to work on, you know, compared to bare steel. Bare steel sits around four hours, four hours and rust or corrosion starts. So what's the opportunity, what's the chance of blasting a whole car, sanding a whole car, stripping a whole car, and having it sit there and bodyworking it in under four hours ready to seal. Like, good luck with that one. So epoxy, just get this thing to bare metal, get it clean, sterile, surgical level, it's clean, epoxy, and you're good, you're safe. You can buy the time, you can start to bodywork on top of it. You can do your fill work on, bond, sorry, Bondo, US guys, do your Bondo work on top of the epoxy, try and minimize those cut throughs, and you're good to go. That's why we use epoxy. So the car's sealed, right? It's sealed. We've done our filler work, Bondo work. The whole thing, restoration job, let's have a bit of, you know, be a little bit realistic here. We've got Bondo head to toe, headlight to tail light. It's skimmed, but it's nice and crisp, right? A lot of repairs, a lot more than a collision repair or a smash repair job where it's just this little blend, little thing we feather out and move on. It's the whole car. We've spent a couple hundred hours doing this thing, right? So next product is poly, polyester, spray poly, spray fill. Um, you know, it's got a whole bunch of nicknames. Basically, it's polyester. It's a spray polyester, a spray filler. Now, 
spray poly is extremely high building. So we'll come around to high build and high fill primers, bit of a false nickname there, polyesters. Polyester, one coat of polyester is three times the film build of a urethane or a high build primer, right? We want to get this build, we want to get thickness to our build so we can come back and sand into it, block sand into it and perfect our shapes. All that Bondo work, all that filler work we've done, we need to gracefully feather and blend and perfect all of that. And that's what the polyester's for. An AB product, AB being your two components, and then a reducer is just to thin it out, make it more, make it flow, change the viscosity so you can spray it out. So you've got your A, which is generally your primary product, and then you've got your B, which is your catalyst or your hardener. And that's all 2K refers to, two component. So 2K, 2K primer or high build primer, like in a, in a resto job, when, when are we using this? You know, through our, through our range of products, you've got all this stuff, when more in a restoration project, it's gonna be more what I would say is a final prime. So body work's done, sanding's done, polyester's set, we've perfected all of our shapes, and we're just refining scratch profile and just getting one consistent coverage, one consistent coat on the whole thing as our final prime. That's where we're using this stuff. Now high build, high fill, it's the same product. Urethane, it's the same product. 2K, high build, high fill, urethane primer, okay? Ultimately, they're all the one thing. High build primer, I don't, it shouldn't be really called high build primer, it's just primer. In the, in the scale of restoration, when we're talking about polys, high build or high fill is not high build, high fill, it's just primer, okay? So, uh, let's see, primer, primer, here we go, primer, right? Typical primer, four to one with some reducer. Um, there's another one here, DTM, primer. Now, that is after polyester. So we've rubbed our poly, we've perfected our shape, worked up through a few different grits. Now we've decided what paint brand we're gonna go with on top. So grab some of their primer, data sheet, read the data sheet, get the correct mix ratio and the correct application and then use their primer. Three more things to quickly zip through before we give you the ultimate process for restoration. One is shrinkage. No one likes shrinkage. However, use a product. So these here, this is, this is, oh, what's this? Eight months old, no shrinkage. This one, eight months old again, no shrinkage. This one here, this is probably about three to four years old, no shrinkage. Look at that, 21, three years old. No shrinkage, no cracking, right? It's always good when you're using products, be aware of what's called the solid content. How many sol how much percentage of solids? You want a product that's a high solid product or a tremendously high product, 70, 80% solids for restoration. What that means is all the good stuff in the primer is not reduced, it doesn't have too many reducers in it. So when you spray it down, you end up with a lot of solid product on left on the surface, and as all that solvent comes out, it's not gonna shrink down, it's not gonna split up, it's not gonna crack, it's not gonna pull into all your sanding marks. So high solids, high amount of solids in your product, what is the solid content, the solid count of each product is gonna minimize the shrinkage. So next thing is microns. I love talking about microns and film build thickness, and I just wanted to pull back on this and put this into reality. I said before, high build, high fill primers, a bit of a misconception. So can't commit all this stuff to memory, so I've got to be of a cheat sheet running here. Now, high build primers, right? How many microns is a high build primer? So high build primer, 30 microns per coat. So 30 microns, right? I mentioned earlier, this piece of paper is 100 microns thick. So it's going to take you three coats of a high build primer to get to this thickness. If you've got imperfections in your bodywork, how are you going to sand those imperfections out in that amount of thickness. That's why we go for restoration, we go back to a polyester to get that huge amount of film build so we can work back in and perfect that. 30 microns in inches is one thou. It's zero, zero, 001 of a thou. Like, it's, to measure that is so small. And that's what a high build, so high build primer, it's a bit of a false term, I believe. Let's just call it primer, that's what it is. Mixing, okay? We've talked about etch primers, acid etches, right? They're a single, single K, single component, just single product, single. Just put it in the gun, spray it. You can reduce it if you want, but single K. You've also got like a 
plastic adhesion promoter. Really good smash repair, plastics, bumpers, mirrors, different things like that. And then you get these special things, you know, let's just call them a super glue. So you've got like a super glue, a super glue primer. Um, it, it's a wet on wet, it's a single thing, no mixing required. It, it basically, it's a bit of a cheat, they'll stick anything to anything. You don't really need, need them in restoration. But mixing, so a lot of the stuff we talked about today, especially the polyesters, they're 100 to 1 or 2 to 100, which is 1 to 50. But then once you get into your epoxies and your primers, generally they are 4 to 1. So mixing can be really easy in these little guys. Mixing cups, you know, you just spin this around, you find the scale, 4 to 1, tip it in, tip the hardener in, reduce it where you want it, and you're set. Just be cautious, though, you always got to refer back to your TDSs. TDSs, they'll, they'll say, mix by volume or mix by weight. Really important, don't get caught out on this. For example, an epoxy, okay, four liters, a bit more than a gallon for the US guys, right? It's not gonna weigh four kilograms, it's actually like six kilograms. So that means one liter is one and a half kilos. So if you screw up and add the wrong amount of hardener, you effectively can be 50% out on your hardener. So just be very, very cautious, read the data sheets, read the TDSs, and make sure you're either mixing by volume or you're mixing by weight, very important. So what is the ultimate process for restoration? We've done a real quick overview of each of the products. You know, I can get it, still a little bit confusing, but what do we need to do? So, resto, let's think about this. Now remember, keep in mind, we're talking about outside body work pretty exclusively, okay? So, let's say we've done our metal work. Metal work's good, it's good as we're gonna get it. Metal work's done, right? Clean metal. Now, bang, epoxy. Two good coats of epoxy. Now we've got some stuff here, it's a high build, but good, nice, decent coats of epoxy. Then we're good. Our bare metal's covered, we're sealed, moisture protected, solvent protected, ready to go. Body filler on top, perfect the shape. Your body filler is all for making shape correct. Fine tuning, adjusting, and correcting. You really wanna minimize those cut throughs to steel. The second you open up the steel, you're opening up the possibility of corrosion. That's why we want a good amount of epoxy underneath our filler work, right? Filler work done, shape is done, really nice. Now, polyester, a good high solid polyester. Right, you want to get a polyester with the highest solid content you can find. Three to four nice big fat coats of polyester. This is where you're going to be doing the bulk of your block work, spline sanding and really perfecting all those surfaces, all those lines, getting them nice and sharp, nice and crisp, work up through the grits. Once we've come up to a grit range that we're happy with, let's say we're aiming for around a 320, somewhere there, then we do three nice coats of primer, okay? Not relying on it as a high build, because it's not really a high build. We've done that, our shaping work's done. We aren't primer, so we want to refine the, sur the surface profile ready for our paint adhesion. And we're trying to get a primer down with one consistent color at the end of it. We don't want different cut throughs, and different rub throughs, all different colors and patches here, there. We just want one nice, consistent, evenly sanded, one colored primer. We're good to paint, we're good to go. How easy is that? Simple, okay? No need to get confused with all these different nicknames, different things. Very simple, each product has a specific process, followed in a very simple manner, can get great results. All right, so we really enjoy doing these videos, right? We get asked these questions multiple times a day. This is our, this is our day to day. We're having these conversations with people every single day. We've had these conversations for the last 20 years, right? We've tried to learn as much about the products as we can and pass as much on as we can. We want you guys to get the best out of your products, the best out of your time, make that restoration project as best as you possibly can. So it's about efficiency, correct product, working accurately, and everything else. So as I say, we're having a lot of fun doing these videos. So by all means, you got a question, hit us up, put it in the comments, uh, email us, DM us, whatever. You know, like it, subscribe. The more information you give us, the more subscribing you do, the more it encourages us to make more. So ask questions, get involved, and we'll just keep sharing as much as we possibly can and so you guys get the best results you possibly can.